The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah conceived, and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was one hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has made me laugh. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. She said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. The child grew and was weaned. Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, mocking. Therefore she said to Abraham, Cast out this handmaid and her son, for the son of this handmaid will not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. The thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight on account of his son. God said to Abraham, Don't let it be grievous in your sight because of the boy and because of your handmaid. In all that Sarah says to you, listen to her voice, for from Isaac will your seed be called. Also of the son of the handmaid will I make a nation, because he is your seed. Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and gave her the child, and sent her away. She departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. The water in the bottle was spent, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. She went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about a bow shot away. For she said, Don't let me see the death of the child. She sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. God heard the voice of the boy. The angel of God called to Hagar out of the sky and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Don't be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Get up. Lift up the boy and hold him in your hand, for I will make him a great nation. God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went, filled the bottle with water, and gave the boy drink. God was with the boy, and he grew. He lived in the wilderness, and became as he grew up an archer. He lived in the wilderness of Paran. His mother took a wife for him out of the land of Egypt. It happened at that time, that Abimelech and Phicol, the captain of his host, spoke to Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son. But according to the kindness that I have done to you, you shall do to me, and to the land in which you have lived as a foreigner. Abraham said, I will swear. Abraham complained to Abimelech because of a water well which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. Abimelech said, I don't know who has done this thing, neither did you tell me, neither did I hear of it until today. Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech. Those two made a covenant. Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Abimelech said to Abraham, what do these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves mean? He said, You shall take these seven ewe lambs from my hand, that it may be a witness to me that I have dug this well. Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because they both swore there. So they made a covenant at Beersheba. Abimelech rose up with Phicol, the captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Abraham lived as a foreigner in the land of the Philistines many days. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man who was the master of a household, who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. To them he said, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went their way. 
Again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. About the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle. He said to them, Why do you stand here all day idle? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and you will receive what is right. When evening had come, the lord of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last to the first. When those who were hired at about the eleventh hour came, they each received a denarius. When the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise each received a denarius. When they received it, they murmured against the master of the household, saying, These last have spent one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me for a denarius? Take that which is yours and go your way. It is my desire to give to this last just as much as to you. Isn't it lawful for me to do what I want with what I own? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock, to scourge, and to crucify, and the third day he will be raised up. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, kneeling and asking a certain thing of him. He said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these, my two sons, may sit one on your right hand and one on your left hand in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it is for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard it, they were indignant with the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. Whoever desires to be first among you shall be your bondservant even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. As they went out from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. Behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, you son of David. The multitude rebuked them, telling them that they should be quiet, but they cried out even more, Lord, have mercy on us, you son of David. Jesus stood still and called them and asked, What do you want me to do for you? They told him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Jesus, being moved with compassion, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received their sight and they followed him. Chapter 10 Now those who were sealed were Nehemiah the governor, the son of Hakaliah, and Zedekiah, Sariah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Pashur, Amariah, Malchijah, Hattush, Shebaniah, Malak, Haram, Merimoth, Obadiah, Daniel, Ginnathon, Baruch, Meshalem, Abijah, Mijamim, Maziah, Bilgai, Shemaiah, these were the priests. The Levites, namely, Jeshua the son of Azaniah, Benui of the sons of Hinnadad, Cadmiel and their brothers, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Kalita, Peliah, Hanan, Micah, Rehob, Hashabiah, Zakur, Sherebiah, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Benai, Beninu. The chiefs of the people, Parash, Pahath Moab, Elam, Zatu, Benai, Bunai, Asgad, 
Babai, Adonijah, Bigvi, Adon, Adder, Hezekiah, Azur, Hodiah, Hashem, Bezai, Harif, Anathoth, Nobai, Machpiash, Meshalem, Hezer, Mezezabel, Zadok, Jadua, Pelatiah, Hanan, Ananiah, Hoshea, Hananiah, Hashub, Halohesh, Pilha, Shobek, Rehum, Hashabna, Masaya, and Ahia, Hanan, Anan, Malak, Haram, Baana. The rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Nethanim, and all those who had separated themselves from the peoples of the lands to the law of God, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, everyone who had knowledge and understanding. They joined with their brothers, their nobles, and entered into a curse and into an oath, to walk in God's law, which was given by Moses the servant of God, and to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord our God, and all his ordinances and his statutes, and that we would not give our daughters to the peoples of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. And if the peoples of the land bring wares or any grain on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy of them on the Sabbath, or on a holy day, and that we would forego the seventh year, and the exaction of every debt. Also we made ordinances for us, to charge ourselves yearly with the third part of a shekel for the service of the house of our God, for the showbread, and for the continual meal offering, and for the continual burnt offering, for the Sabbaths, for the new moons, for the set feast, and for the holy things, and for the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel, and for all the work of the house of our God. We cast lots, the priests, the Levites, and the people, for the wood offering, to bring it into the house of our God, according to our fathers' houses, at a times appointed year by year, to burn on the altar of the Lord our God, as it is written in the law, and to bring the first fruits of our ground, and the first fruits of all fruit of all manner of trees year by year to the house of the Lord, also the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle, as it is written in the law, and the firstborn of our herds and of our flocks, to bring to the house of our God, to the priests who minister in the house of our God, and that we should bring the first fruits of our dough and our heave offerings, and the fruit of all manner of trees, the new wine and the oil to the priest, to the chambers of the house of our God, and the tithes of our ground to the Levites, for they, the Levites, take the tithes in all the cities of our tillage. The priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites, when the Levites take tithes, and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithes to the house of our God, to the chambers, into the treasure house. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the heave offering of the grain, of the new wine, and of the oil to the chambers, where are the vessels of the sanctuary, and the priests to minister, and the porters and the singers, and we will not forsake the house of our God. After the uproar had ceased, Paul sent for the disciples, took leave of them, and departed to go into Macedonia. When he had gone through those parts and had encouraged them with many words, he came into Greece. When he had spent three months there, and a plot was made against him by Jews as he was about to set sail for Syria, he determined to return through Macedonia. These accompanied him as far as Asia, Sopater of Berea, Aristarchus and Segundus of the Thessalonians, Gaius of Derbe, Timothy, and Tychicus, and Trophimus of Asia. But these had gone ahead, and were waiting for us at Troas. We sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came to them at Troas in five days, where we stayed seven days. On the first day of the week, when the disciples were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day, and continued his speech until midnight. There were many lights in the upper chamber where we were gathered together. A certain young man named Eutychus sat in the window weighed down with deep sleep. As Paul spoke still longer, being weighed down by his sleep, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him said, Don't be troubled, 
for his life is in him. When he had gone up and had broken bread and eaten and had talked with them a long while, even until break of day he departed, they brought the boy alive and were not a little comforted. But we who went ahead to the ship set sail for Assos, there intending to take in Paul, for he had so arranged, intending himself to go by land. When he met us at Assos, we took him in and came to Mytilene. Sailing from there, we came the following day opposite Chios. The next day we touched at Samos and stayed at Tregilium, and the day after we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail past Ephesus, that he might not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hastening, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus, and called to himself the elders of the assembly. When they had come to him, he said to them, You yourselves know, from the first day that I set foot in Asia, how I was with you all the time, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears, and with trials which happened to me by the plots of the Jews. How I didn't shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable, teaching you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Now behold, I go bound by the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions wait for me. But these things don't count, nor do I hold my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus, to fully testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Now behold, I know that you all, among whom I went about preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am clean from the blood of all men, for I didn't shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the assembly of the Lord in God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know that after my departure vicious wolves will enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Men will arise from among your own selves, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore watch, remembering that for a period of three years I didn't cease to admonish everyone night and day with tears. Now, brothers, I entrust you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things I gave you an example, so that laboring you ought to help the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had spoken these things, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. They all wept a lot and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all because of the word which he had spoken, that they should see his face no more. They brought him on his way to the ship.